The following clip is meant to give viewers a sense of how team-based learning works in a graduate level pharmacy course at Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, I'm Cindy Kirkwood and I'm an associate professor in the School of Pharmacy here at Virginia Commonwealth University. Hi, I'm Bridget Seacat. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Pharmacy. The first course um, that I've been involved in is a, a pharmacotherapy course. And that traditionally has been taught using the lecture format where a lot of PowerPoint slides were used. Um, many times uh, faculty could not get through all the slides and the students often complained they couldn't get through the whole slide set and the content. So my course was largely lecture based. Um, I had incorporated some active learning group activities, but I felt like there were a lot of challenges. Sometimes the students weren't preparing for class. I felt like I was spending a good amount of time introducing them to the material um, because they hadn't prepared for class. And, and that was evidenced by the level of discussion that would occur during the class. And I could tell that there wasn't uh, a lot of preparation going on. And even though there were structured um, group activities, they were structured in a way that could allow those students who didn't want to participate not to participate and those students who were more vocal to be more active and so it kind of allowed students I think to hide with the group activities and I guess those are some of the hallmarks of traditional group activities and some of the challenges with some of the way we structure or I structured my group activities. And then also when I saw some of my students who I'd had in my course in the third year, during their fourth year on rotations, um, and some of the questions um, would come up of some of the things that we had learned during the third year would come up again in the fourth year. And there would be times that I would see that the students didn't recall either learning the material or weren't able to apply it. And so, um, you know, it made me wonder, um, did they not develop a deep understanding of the material the first time, or did we not provide them with enough opportunities to apply the material? And, and another thing Bridget mentioned, too, is our class sizes keep increasing, and our enrollment keeps increasing. And we were noticing as that was happening that there were a lot of students who were not paying attention in class. They were you know, reading newspapers, um, talking off topic. Sometimes they wouldn't come to class. Sometimes they were coming in late and disrupting class. So we were kind of also really looking for a way to engage them a little bit more to make it more interesting that they would want to come to class. You know, faculty would sit and gripe about things and you say, well, how are you teaching? It really may come down to it that, yes, I'm straight lecturing. You know, I turn the lights off and the students just tune them out, basically. The components I thought that intrigued me most were that um, it was structured and designed in a way that, that held students accountable for their learning and could help motivate them to be prepared for class. It also um, seemed like it provided opportunities, multiple opportunities for them to be able to apply what they learned. Well, healthcare is a, a, essentially a team approach and um, I felt like if our pharmacy students were going to need to be advocates for their patients, they need to be able to have the teamwork skills that are needed to be able to work collaboratively. And, you know, I, I know that traditionally within the curriculum there, there are students that are more quiet that may not be used to presenting their viewpoints and the rationale for their viewpoints and, until they go out on their fourth year clinical rotations and then um, they're on a team where they're expected to present their recommendations and then be able to present the rationale for them. Team-based learning would give them more opportunities before they went out on their fourth year to be able to practice those skills within uh, members of their own profession in, in a, quote, I guess, safer environment. At the very beginning of the course, the students are divided into teams. This is done in the classroom in front of the students, where you find different characteristics that might separate, for a better word, good problem solvers, maybe from people who struggle a little bit making decisions. I come up with some strategies, you know, have they had a career before? Um, are they married? Do they have kids? I mean, these are people who multitask. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe there's people who are more interested um, in community pharmacy versus hospital pharmacy. And the students, and mind you, we do this in a large classroom, I have over 100 students. They line up around the, the outer edge of the classroom and then they count off from 1 to 20. And then they start recounting again. And this is how the groups are formed. The groups then sit in the classroom. They have a home in the classroom every time they sit in the exact same space. So they are familiar with the routine, which is they walk into the classroom on the day that there's a readiness assessment test, and they pick up their folder, and they go sit down with their team. They then take a 10-question multiple-choice quiz, 
and that's called the IRA, Individual Readiness Assessment Test. When the group is done, they put them all together, put, put it in a paper clip, then I'll get a show of hands how many teams are done. When I have about a third of the class done, I call for the IRATs to come down. One member of the group brings the IRAT down to the front, and it, there's a teaching assistant. She then gives them the GRAT, uh, which is the Group Readiness Assessment Test. At this point, it's one sheet of paper, they take it back to the team, fills out the card, and it's like a lottery card, it's a scratch-off card. So if the students answer number question number one correctly, they get a total of four points for it. So they scratch, and what they're looking for is a star. And you can hear the groups. When they get the star, they're like, yes, yeah, that was right. But if they scratch and there's not the correct answer, then the group has to go back and discuss, you know, what is our next choice? And then they come up with a second choice. And so they go back to the card and scratch a second time. If they get it correct on the second time, they get two points. If for some reason it's incorrect, they go back again and they talk and discuss. And then they come back third time and they can scratch third time. If they get it right, they get one point. If they get it wrong, they've gotten zero for that question. So they work their way through the 10 questions. These are the exact same questions that were on the IRAT. There's a lot of discussion. The room is extremely um, busy at that, at that point. Um, so you can tell a lot of learning is going on. When they are done with the, the GRAT, they bring the card down. And I wait, again, for about six cards to come in. And once I get six cards, I call for all the cards to come in. At this point, the students might disagree with a question and might want to challenge it. And this is a good thing because it tells you that they are thinking critically. They're taking information from the reading, from what they know, and they're, they're making a challenge. So there is an appeal process, and there's an appeal sheet in the folder, and the groups can sit down together and write the appeal. At this point, they could use their notes. They must cite a reference you know, in a certain page where the answer is. They turn their appeal sheets in. I usually let them take a break at that time and re read over the appeals and decide if I'm going to accept them or not. The other thing that we do at that time is put the scores for all the groups and project that at the front of the room. So at this point, they can see how their team is doing relative to the other teams in the class. It might give them feedback that they need to study a little bit more, or if they get them all right, you know, we're doing the right thing. And can I add to yes. that? That was a great description. And um, I think it's, like you were saying, Cindy, it's so amazing to watch these teams work um, on these 10 questions on the GRAT, how these teams evolve over time as they work on the GRAT. And I think what we commonly see at the beginning when they're first they work on these GRATs, there are students that will defer to other team members. Whoever are, are, is the most vocal team member, they'll usually go with that and, and that they'll say, okay, that sounds good, let's scratch A. Or they'll take a vote and say, well, who thinks it's A, who thinks it's B, and, and they may go with, with the majority. And over time, you, you kind of see the teams evolve in that they work more towards building a consensus and deciding an answer. So whereas at the beginning where they went with a more vocal person, but the vocal person actually led them down the wrong path, um, and maybe there was a quieter student that didn't speak up, and they realized, hey, I knew, I knew the answer to that. I wish I had spoken up. So you see these teams evolve over time. When a, a team member says, I think it's A, you hear the other team member saying, why? Why do you think it's A? <laughs> and, and, and so I, you see the, the team members presenting um, the rationale for, for why they think an answer is, is correct. And so it's really neat to see the power of these um, team discussions and how they really evolve over time. The course in which I teach, there are, are multiple instructors. And some of them like, still like to walk in with some um, PowerPoint slides. So they may come in and start lecturing on a topic, and then they break, and then they will go to, out into an application exercise, and then they may come back to their slides. Um, I have some, a few people who want to come in and just, just start discussing, just start with a case. Mm -hmm. But they structure their case so that it covers the component of what a lecture would, would cover. So some of them walk in with an application exercise and just turn the students loose on the application exercise in the groups. And then they come back once the, ex the students are finished with the exercise and work through the exercise, highlighting the points that you know, many people would do in a PowerPoint presentation. So I have a variety of ways people do this. What I've noticed is that the students come into class prepared and you can start at a much higher level of discussion 
I don't feel like I have to reiterate anything in the book chapter on any facts or figures because the students already have that. They've already created a set of notes from their book chapters. I find that they read because you can see little, you know, they'll open their books and they've highlighted things. There are little post-it marks all over. They carry their books to class. So they're, to me, they're much more engaged in their own self-initiated learning um, than the learning that I'm saying that they have to have. Mm -hmm. So I start off at a much higher level and I think I'm, I'm hitting more of the critical decision points that pharmacists need to make with the drug therapy as opposed to just giving them the basics. You know, here's a list of drugs and these are the list of adverse effects and these are the um, drug interactions. What I think we spend in class doing more is problem solving, which is what pharmacists need to do in the future. Mm -hmm. and. I think they're also better able to self-assess what they know and what they don't know because if they can't find it in their notes, then they might look in their, their drug information sources. We have personal digital assistants that they have. So I think that they self-assess better. My hope, and I, you know, I can't say that they're doing this right now, but I think when you lay those skills that they're going to be more of a lifelong learner because they're in a profession where we're just not teaching them everything they need to know up to this point. They have to continually learn because more drugs come on the market. Um, the culture sometimes of pharmacy changes. The politics of it changes. And they're going to need to learn you know, how to use their cognitive skills more as a survival mechanism rather than um, the hands-on dispensing, which is what we were teaching students you know, 20 years ago. So um, I really do like this method because I think it makes them appreciate their ability to solve problems, gives them the confidence, and it makes them realize that I have to learn more. The team part of it, um, it Bridget used the word rich, and I think that is, is so true. It is so rewarding to stand back and watch them just talk at a level that, I'm, that I see fourth year students talking mm -hmm. to healthcare professionals. They are doing it more in the classroom now than what I've ever seen.